Hello, and welcome to North Country Matters. My name is Donna Seymour. I'm a member of the St. Lawrence County League of Women Voters. Today we're going to be talking about decluttering, something almost everyone needs to do. My guest today is actually my co-host, Bess Kearney. Bess is a member of the St. Lawrence Valley Hospice Board, and it's nice to have you on this side of the camera. We're not usually here together, are it's, we, Bess? It's true. This will be fun. <laughs> So, um, uh, 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 recently, Bess gave a Lunch and Learn seminar for hospice about the gentle art of death cleaning, and today we're going to lean, learn more about this very important topic. So, Bess, the term death cleaning was actually added to the dictionary this spring, and many people think it's about time. How can death cleaning be defined or described? Okay, um, and actually not only to the dictionary, but if you go online, you're going to find so many sites and mm -hmm. videos and so on, but um, death cleaning is is not as morbid as it sounds, and it has nothing to do with corpses. Okay, it has to do with the things mm -hmm. in your life and all of the things you've accumulated over a lifetime. And so, uh, Dictionary.com describes it as the process of cleaning and decluttering one's home so as to spare others, especially family members, from the chore of it after one's death. Well, anybody who's ever had that weighty task of cleaning out the home of, of a parent or another relative understands why this concept is one that more Americans need to become familiar with. We are the king and queen of clutter in this country. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. And it, on top of that, it's sort of preparing yourself and preparing those you care about for the the your the final stage of your relationship with things. I mean, it starts when you're born, and uh, that's how you learn to accumulate with the toys and all the learning things. And at every stage of your life, there's more and more. When you finally get to the end of your life, it, it doesn't have to be, you know, when you know that you are will soon die, it means that it's sort of simplifying and decluttering mm -hmm. as you lose a need for things. It's shedding the layers, and uh, uh, Thomas Merton, who I enjoy, said, the things that we love tell us what we are, and so those things that define us are difficult to get rid of. That's the, the real challenge. So, uh, as Americans, we ha and we, we're not the only ones, but we notably are reluctant to talk about death. Mm -hmm. As though, if we don't talk about it, we don't have to think about it. It's not as though we're not going to die. We can just, nobody gets out of this world no, alive, as the old true. song says. <laughs> but, but we sort of push, push it away. But um, now, uh, one, of, one of the authors I enjoy, Gretchen Rubin, mm -hmm. who wrote uh, Outer Order, Inner Calm, uh, she, she lists about three good reasons to start that conversation, and that is to share and preserve our own stories with those we love. It's to minimize, obviously, the cleanup for family members and loved ones mm -hmm. after we die, uh, and it also can be very freeing. It can sort of free up your time of caring for all of the things we own. So, so let's talk a little bit, Bess, about where this concept of death cleaning comes from. It's actually a Swedish term, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's actually, um, and I tried, I tried to pronounce it. Uh, it Correctly, of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah, with, with help from online, and I think it. It comes out something like Dürstenen. Okay. But don't quote me on that. <laughs> uh, and Neither it, one of us are Swedish, so. <laughs> it literally me means death cleaning, but in Sweden, it, just in a more common usage, it can mean finally getting around to, to weeding out that drawer that will no longer close that closet where you need to get a running start to get another thing in. Don't open that closet door, <laughs> McGee, is a famous old comedy <laughs> yeah. line from radio in this country. Yeah. And so, uh, what, one of my favorite 
uh, authors. And I think that the greatest introduction to it is uh, Margareta Magnuson. And I, I don't know if, if you can see this. Mm -hmm. This book is available at hospice in the library. And it's just a, a wonderful sort of semi-memoir. Mm -hmm. uh, she describes herself as being somewhere between 80 and 100 years old. And uh, it's, uh, it's a very good description of how, how she is approaching death cleaning. Mm -hmm. But it's not a scary thing there. It's just, yeah. It's actually taking control of your possessions and letting one of your possessions control you, isn't it, in many ways? Oh, yes, exactly. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. And, and we know that um, things can have as much of an emotional connection to us as people can have. And so sorting all that out is really uh, very healthy and very freeing, as you had said. Uh, you know, one of the things that I, I looked at online was try to get a, a handle on how many millions of self-storage units there are in this country. And I could not come up with a figure, which is unusual, because usually you can find those kind of numbers on the Internet. But it's a huge business, needless to say. And when you add that to the attics, the closets, the storage rooms, the back bedrooms, the basements that people have, this can be a pretty overwhelming task, can it? Oh yes, oh yes, it doesn't happen no. overnight. And so my advice is, don't rush, but don't delay. You need time. Mm -hmm. uh, and you also need to, to give it a little bit of thought. Um, Another another good resource is Marie Kondo, mm -hmm. who takes sort of a, a spiritual look at our relationship with physical objects, the object world, and parts of her her writing. She now has two books, uh, are, are sort of you know Eastern and and thinking, and it's hard this to the kind of the zen of this whole exactly. thing. Exactly, yeah. but I've tried it, and it really works. Uh, just because we do have relation, as you were saying, mm -hmm. relationships with things, in a way they remind us, they define us. So then, how do I get rid of that? Uh, or let go of it. Sometimes uh, it isn't so much, it's, it's being emotionally ready to let go of, of something because it does have those triggers for us about maybe happy times, maybe sad times, family times, and it's like you just don't want to quite take your finger off that that pressure point. Right, and, and sometimes it's that really ugly vase that Aunt Edith gave you, and you, in case she stops by again, you know, you know there's uh, a little guilt. I have a, uh, a lamp that was a wedding present that my parents got, and in 64 years, no one ever broke that lamp. My mother gave it to me, she said, <laughs> You've got four kids, maybe one of them will break it. But that lamp is still intact after all these years. So, yeah, uh, getting rid of that lamp, I feel like it's something I can't quite do. And since it hasn't broken by itself, I guess it'll be somebody else's responsibility. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, d there is sort of a natural weeding out, excuse me, death cleaning, or uh, some people say legacy cleaning, mm -hmm. that happens as we go through different stages of our life. Uh, now, I know you didn't get rid of your high chairs, did you? I did not get rid of my high chairs. Oh, my and, right on, on the curb. <laughs> I turned them into end tables, and uh, <clears throat> it's crazy. And uh, my, my ch it's particularly my daughters are very worried about having to come someday and clean out our house because we have so many things like that that we just haven't passed on the way we should have. Well, there, you know, we'll talk about shoulds later, <laughs> but, but sometimes you are, you, you're pushed into it, and mm -hmm. you, you don't have much of a choice. Um, when it's time to downsize, mm -hmm. and you can no longer take care, physically take care right. of that large home, uh, of the death of a spouse, uh, or if you're going to a nursing home. Or just a move, a physical move oh, sometimes. You know, I have a friend who just, literally just moved, and she talked about the fact that the first time she moved it was in a cargo van. The last time she moved, which was this a few weeks ago, it was in a, uh, a moving van, and she said, I have 12,000 pounds of stuff. I couldn't move it in a cargo van anymore. 
And she's not quite ready to check out yet, but she's been overwhelmed by having to sort through right. getting, you know, this the idea of moving from one state to the next. And so that really is, uh, and people who don't move, if you move into your house and you're still there 40 or 60 or 70 years later, you haven't gone through that downsizing and that weeding process, you haven't had to. And that really becomes overwhelming, yeah, doesn't it? Yes, absolutely. Uh, so you're not forced to, but, yeah. So, we don't have to wait till we die, or we're ready to die right. to do this. We can start at any time, and we have to do it in manageable bites, because otherwise it, it can be just paralyzingly overwhelming, can it? If you look at your whole house and say, I gotta, I've got to do this whole house, you can't do it that way in your head, No, can you? No, you absolutely, as a matter of fact, that is the ticket to failure right there. Uh, just being a perfectionist about it, and I've got to get it all done in a certain amount of time, you're, you're doomed. That's where the perfect is the enemy of the, the good. Yes, that's yes. for sure. Yeah, so, but there's a, there's a lot of uh, help out there. There's, uh, on the hospice website, you'll find a reading list mm -hmm. that includes internet uh, links. There are, uh, so I, I brought some some of my go-tos, well, of course, the, the gentle art of Swedish death cleaning, if you read nothing else, that's, that's the book. And it's a slim book. It's not going to take you a long time to no. run through it. No, and it's, it? it's lightly written. Uh, Marie Kondo mm -hmm. uh, is worth reading. Uh, oh, my funny story, and I know she's not going to watch. So we're safe. My, uh, my sister hasn't moved in about, I don't know, 30 years. Okay. Uh, more. Okay. So, uh, I, I was reading this, this uh, life-changing magic of tidying up, uh, sort of on the sly in her house. And she said, oh, what's that? What's that? So when I finished it, I gave it to her. And she got part way through and said, no. Nope, not for me, huh? Nope. <laughs> one more time, please. Hold it up one more time. And so, um, so, and all these books, we'll actually have a link in the show notes to some of these uh, books so that, uh, and the names of the books and, and where they're located in the hospice library. And we should also say that hospice library is available to be borrowed from. Oh, yes. So that uh, uh, when, we had, uh, when we had the when we had the folks on a little while ago, they talked about the fact that a lot of their library it has to do with grief counseling, but everything in their library is available to borrow. So right. don't be... Don't be afraid to go to hospice for some of these titles. But in terms of making the job more manageable, there's an unlikely resource, and I don't think you'll find her in the hospice library, but her name is Maria Silly, but Silly spelled with a C. Okay. And she is the fly lady. Okay, fly because she teaches fly fishing, which has nothing to do with anything, but her latest book is called The Chaos Cure. <laughs> and chaos is an acronym, and the subtitle is Clean Your House and Calm Your Soul in 15 Minutes. Well, that, that 15 minutes is sort of the clue. What you want to do with an overwhelming task is set your kitchen timer, and you can do anything for five minutes, for 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. And so tell yourself, I'm going to tackle this room, this closet, this, these books, whatever, for give yourself a time, set the timer when it goes off, stop. I have a, a, a dear friend whose husband recently died, and he was, sorry, a pack rat. You could not see the floor mm -hmm. in his den. It was a, a den. So uh, she was just getting a little overwhelmed with the task, and I said, Set the kitchen timer. It doesn't have to be a long time. You can try short periods of time. And when it when it rings, stop and close the door. Just walk away. And she said she was amazed at how much she was accomplishing in a short time mm -hmm. when she knew it wouldn't drag out forever and she became a lot more efficient. So that's uh, the chaos cure. <laughs> Sounds like the flower lady has got a, a great idea yeah, there. Yeah. So one of the things that you have to think about when you start decluttering your own space and you have to decide what to do with it. What do you hang on to? What do you maybe give to family? What maybe do you donate? 
And let's face it, some of it is going to have to go in the trash because it turns out we always have things that, what on earth was I thinking when I didn't throw that away at the appropriate time? Yeah, yeah. Well, I like to think back to the words of William Morris. And he was a, a minimalist. I will get his century wrong, but it wasn't the 19th or the 20th, whatever. Uh, he was a designer. Mm -hmm. He was a philosopher. He was a minimalist and an artist. And the words that he, he spoke that stick with me and are a good jumping off spot are have nothing in your houses that you do not know to be useful or believe to be beautiful. So his mantra was function and beauty. Mm -hmm. And that's a good place to look. If you, if you look at something and you think it's ugly, so I really should get rid of that lamp, huh? <laughs> oh, somebody else is going to love it. The beauty being in the eye, you know. Uh, but also, when you find something and you say, we still own that, mm -hmm. or, well, I haven't used this in X number of years, so maybe it is no, no longer useful. So you, can, you start there. You don't have to do it alone. Mm -hmm. If you have family members, you can Shanghai a a good understanding, truth-telling friend, okay? Someone with no emotional investment in your stuff. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and then what you want to do is start with the, the big things. Mm -hmm. Start with the, the, the pieces of furniture. Uh, clothing is another easy hit. You know, if, it's, if those shoes are dusty... There's it, a reason. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If, if it's so out of style or it doesn't... Be, clothing is usually a lot easier. The last thing you want to tackle are photos, mm -hmm. any memorabilia. Leave those for the very end, and you might you might want to bring in family members to sort of help you with that. Right, so. right. That sounds like a good idea. And you know, the interesting thing is that there's been a lot of uh, written about this lately because, of course, decluttering has been a topic that's been in the media for the last couple of years thanks to people like Marie Kondo and the truth is that um, our kids don't want our stuff and so uh, meaning the baby boomers our kids don't want our their stuff so if you have inherited a horsehair a Victorian horsehair fainting couch from your grandmother <laughs> don't expect to foist it off on your granddaughter because she's probably not going to thank you for it so how do we give things away? There's a process to go through, isn't there? What does uh, hospice have to say about giving things away or sorting things out in a way that make useful things available to people who really need them? Yeah, good question. Actually, hospice has a, a link on their website. And I think uh, there, there's a, a lovely graphic right on the home page that starts with letting go of treasures and other stuff. Nice little graphic. If you click on there, you'll come up with a, a, an annotated list by community of uh, uh, secondhand uh, stores, thrift stores, consignment shops, auction houses, uh, how to contact the, the local uh, uh, landfill. Right, right, right. That's always important to know what the hours are and what they'll take. And that, sure. so there's a link there. And there's also online sites where you can advertise mm -hmm. things. So, uh, it, one one man's trash is another man's treasure. I'm, I'm telling you, that, lamp, that lamp might have another yeah, life. Yeah, it, it might have another life. You're it, right. it, really. Uh, but the, the other thing is, talk to your family first. Mm -hmm. And if you haven't already started the conversation, about your growing older and what your wishes are and it, there could be some treasures that you own that a child, a relative, a dear friend would treasure. Why not live to watch that person enjoy that's, the lamp? That's right. Yes, See? that's true. That's yeah. true. You know, uh, uh, we have a friend who, um, when his mother went into a nursing home, this is quite a few years ago, we had to come up and clean out her house. and. It was such an emotionally exhausting process for him because he said he couldn't open a closet door, he couldn't pull a box out from under a bed, but what the memories didn't come flying mm -hmm. out and just choking him. And his mother had never, she'd lived in that house for many, many years, she'd never sorted things out. 
his sister and his brothers weren't interested in coming up and doing that, and he felt such a responsibility not to go through absolutely everything and so that he wouldn't throw something away that would have meaning. But it was just exhausting yeah. for him, and, um, and there wasn't a way to take a break from it because he wasn't in his own space, he was in her space, and it, it was a job that had to be done. So really, uh, having these resources about what to do as you're sorting through these piles, because many, many things can have another life if they can be donated. Absolutely. And, you know, there's many places where um, they love to get that kind of stuff, whether it's dishes or uh, bedding or whatever, because someone who needs it can pick it up for a song. And that gives, that's much better than just saying, well, it's all got to go in a dumpster. It can really be sorted and, and very usefully repurposed, can't it? I actually, and, and it's listed on that resource site at, at the hospice website, there's uh, one local auctioneer who uh, consults, comes in and interviews the family when you call them, mm -hmm. whether it's when you're downsizing or you're cleaning up after someone in your family has died. They'll come in, they'll, they'll talk to you, they'll learn what your needs are, and then they'll, they'll label things. They'll say, okay, this, this thing has value, we'll auction it. Mm -hmm. This thing can be donated, we will transport it. The rest goes to the landfill, and they take care of it for you. Now that's, it's unusual, but there are auction houses Works. and, and uh, there are consignment shops that specialize. Uh, in, in general, thrift stores will say, well, no big appliances, or they'll say, oh yes, we'll take those. So You know, one of the hardest things to get rid of sometimes is uh, medical equipment that is still good, because all that has been paid for with usually Medicare money. It hasn't been worn out. Once it's cleaned up, it can certainly be reused by somebody else, but you have to find the right place who will take that kind of equipment. So that's another area that you just don't want to see this stuff get thrown away because someone somewhere can use it who can't afford to go out and buy it brand new, and yet you know, it, it, it has life well beyond the, the first person who was uh, using Absolutely. it. Absolutely. So well, that's, a, that's an area where you can really do a lot of good if you can pass those kinds of things along. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Uh, one of the authors, and I'm, I'm going to confuse them, but I know they're on the, she's on the reading list. Mm -hmm. Her impetus for uh, when she downsized for decluttering, for legacy cleaning, as she called mm -hmm. it, was to set the stage in almost a literal sense. She had a picture in her mind of after her funeral, her children opening the door to her home, and what would they see first? What would they see that told her story? And then her goal was, I want them to be able to clean things out in one day and then go to lunch. In one morning and then go to lunch from the sounds I know, of I know. And, but she, she had gone to the detail of labeling everything and saying, it's okay to throw this away. Who wants that kind of thing? Uh, I don't think that's right for everyone, mm -hmm. but uh, it's another another approach. Is sort of setting the stage yeah. in a way. This uh, this summer, my sister and I went through photographs that had been our parents, and some of them were meticulously labeled, and some uh -huh. of them were just in piles, and they, there was no one there that we recognized. They were from you know, 40 or 50, 60, 70 years ago, and they, there just wasn't any way to sort them in a way that made sense. So the ones that were labeled, we could do something with, and everything else just was a mishmash. So taking the time to label it is going to be doing your family a big favor down the road because they may not recognize Great Aunt Tilly. Uh, in the same way that you do. So, yeah, yeah. And, and really, in terms of, of all of this, one of the best things about it is it can be a great conversation starter, can it, Bess? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Not only a conversation starter, but what a wonderful pretext for passing along your memories, the family lore, your children, they've heard it, whether they're listening or not. Right. But then there's your grandchildren, <clears throat> those of us who are lucky enough to have them. Uh, they deserve to know the story right. of the family. And what better context than to, 
use the things that define us, that are memories, and maybe they can help sort through. Yeah, exactly. And it opens the conversation to, uh, I will not live forever. Which is, again, one of those things that a lot of Americans don't want to talk about with their family members, and yet, after they pass away, all these decisions have to be made, and it's always a case of, gee, I wonder what mom or dad wanted. Yeah. Or, thank goodness they talked about it, we know what they want. So, again, having those conversations is going to make it a much more peaceful process in, in the sense that I know exactly what they wanted, I know what they wanted done with their stuff, whatever stuff is left, mm -hmm. and they went to the trouble of labeling their important things about who they wanted it to go to. My dad had quite a, a collection of uh, Winchesters. And he went through and labeled every single gun about who he wanted in the family to get that. Yeah. So that when the time came, we knew exactly where each one was supposed to go. And the person who got it knew that dad or grandpa had picked it out special for them. Oh. And it was a really yeah. nice... It was a nice thing because otherwise it would be, oh my gosh, what do I do with that? Right, right. Yeah, and without that pre-planning and, and thought and sharing, yeah. then uh, it, it, when you're trying to handle cleaning out and grieving at the same exactly. time, there are things that might end up in the dumpster that you'll later regret. So Right, and there's also going to be things that um, uh, you're not really sure, well gee, is this just something they collected or was it really something in the family? You know, I have a friend that when she went through her mother's house, her, and her mother collected all kinds of things, <laughs> her mother would take a stack of dishes and she'd put a $50 bill in between one or other of the plates. And when my friend went through and she found the $50 bill, there'd be a note saying, I wondered if you'd find this. because. <laughs> <laughs> because her mom knew that this was, you know, so she said at that point I started going through everything and realizing that mom had left me a lot of uh, little funny notes like that, hoping I would find them. And oh. she said it was just serendipitous that she started, she started lifting plates because she said, I don't need 50 sets of dishes, but, you know, something her mother collected. Oh, love it. Yeah, so, That's you know, right. you can... Uh, you can kind of play with your uh, your heirs a little bit and have why some not? fun with them. Sure, why not? Exactly. <laughs> so, so as we wrap up today, any closing thoughts? Uh, what would you like to uh, say to people? Don't be afraid to get started. And yeah, I uh, I would say there's no rush, but don't delay. And there is no right or wrong way mm -hmm. because each of us has different values. Uh, you have to just start the converse, the internal conversation, but also start the conversation with the people you love the most, so that you're sharing this final time, even if this final time means the next 20 years. Right. Yeah. But, yeah. but we're all on that path, and why not share it? And it, I think they can learn some powerful things from the way we conduct ourselves in the letting go process. So. It is, I, I think at best, death cleaning, legacy cleaning, is a, a ritual of loving acceptance, of remembering, of connecting with others. So don't rush, but don't delay. That's good advice, Bess. Thank you very much. This has been a lot of, uh, this has been a lot of fun, and I know we've talked about something that uh, a lot of people are, are facing right now, or will face someday, and, and actually getting a handle on it, and doing this in a thoughtful, uh, way is going to make it much easier in the long run on them. I know when my sister and I went through pictures, we laughed like moons. <laughs> and we, we had, many of these were things we had never seen before. If we had seen them, we would have talked to mom and dad about them, but of course by the time we found them it was too late. So, but we, we did, we had a great time going through that stuff, and we're grateful for the things that, that they had taken the time to label. So that, uh, you know, we could really appreciate what we were looking at. And I think that's that's the kind of legacy you want to leave. It's not, oh my gosh, what did they sell us with? It's, oh look, isn't this fun? You know, they, they, were, they were thinking of us when they actually went through and did this work. Yeah. So I would like them, uh, I would like my kids uh, not to uh, burn me in effigy, but to say, gee, <laughs> thanks mom, thanks dad, and gosh, I have a lot of work to do I don't know about you. <laughs> yeah.
So we'll get to it, kids. Just have faith, right? Right. <laughs> So thank you, Bess. Thank you. These conversations are a production of North Country Matters, which are filmed here in the Potsdam Public Library in the Fred W. Cleveland Computer Center. This show is a civic collaboration between the League of Women Voters of St. Lawrence County and the Potsdam Public Library. Until next time, remember, our North Country Matters. Bess, thank you so much. Got this has been just great. Thanks. <laughs>